diving right into enter hours. Let's get ourselves familiarized with the actual user story. It's the second in the highest priority. In other words, it's the second user's story with u priority number one. And it says, user can enter hours worked and save this data or cancel and nothing is saved. Very well. How about if we take a look at the UI sketch. The UI sketch for enter hours should look like this. You go into a page that shows, first of all, the first thing that it shows is this timesheet belongs to the following peer ending date. So you have to be able to identify what's the peer ending date of this current timesheet that you're looking at. Second thing. Is that better? <laughs> Second thing. You are given a list. It's actually a combo drop-down box. A list of all the departments that you can charge time to. Then there's a box where you can manually input all the times in hours. And at that point, you can either save it or cancel it. And in fact, later on, we're going to see that we need to do either one of three things. You can save it, at which that point, after that point, the timesheet is still pending. You can come back to it. You can come back to it and keep modifying it. Or you can cancel. But the third option will be submit it. And then submit it means you actually submitting it to your boss. And when you come back, you will not be able to modify it. Okay? But we'll see that later on. At any rate, what do we have to do? We have to create a JSP page. In fact, initially, this is a screenshot of an actual HTML and I hope you guys are working on your mockups and your HTML mockups because those are the ones that are actually going to show me the interface of your application. It doesn't have to come up from real database data but at least like this one, this mockup is a screenshot of an actual HTML working, a working HTML. So, let's go back to our code. Let's run our project with the current version. Let's see what how, what's the uh, status of the current what's the current status of this project. All right, so when I run it, this is what I get. This is my index, right? If I do timesheet list dot html dot html, what do I get? The mockup of my timesheet list. This is all mockup. This is not real. But if I cut the L from the HTML and hit enter. Look at that. Look at all the processing behind the scenes in the console. This is real stuff. These are the timesheets from Mike Dover. This is real. So right now I should have a mock-up for enter hours. Enter hours.html Oops. 
sorry, it's called timesheet enter hours. Here it is. This is the mock-up. And this is a real HTML. I mean, this is a real HTML that is being fed to me by the web server. The Apache web server running under Tomcat. Look at this. You can actually select a department. You can actually put time. Now what's going to happen when I click save? Nothing. What's going to happen when I click cancel? Nothing. It's a mock-up. That's okay. Tonight we're going to make it work. Tonight we're going to make that save work. What do we have to do to make this thing work? And this is going back to the MVC mine framework okay we have to transform this HTML into a JSP to the controller now the first time that you go in here nothing will be populated obviously you're gonna have some kind of department that it will show up by default but it will not show anything here it only will show zeros So that JSP should be capable of showing an empty timesheet. An empty timesheet. And that should be provided by the controller. So we have to have an enter hours controller. That when you ask the first time, hey, timesheet enter hours dot htm, remember? That's the that's the signal telling, hey, I want this request to be handled by Spring. Not HTML, but dot .htm. There's going to be an enter hours controller that says, oh, okay, I know exactly what you want. And it's going to provide either a timesheet that already exists and show it, or create a brand new timesheet and show it. The JSP is going to have this save button. And you guys remember HTML back in CSIS 3020. When you have either JSP or HTML, you gotta have a form with all these input tags that are going to be posted somewhere. And this somewhere, guess what? It's gonna be the same URL. It's gonna post onto itself. So it's gonna go post back to timesheet enter hours .htm. So back again, the controller is gonna take it's gonna um um, handle it. The enter hours controller is going to handle it and say, wait a minute, oh, you are submitting already. So you're going to identify somehow, oh, you are submitting. A, a, and then what you gonna, what, the, what is the controller going to do? It's going to create a timesheet object of the stuff that you submitted. And it's going to tell the timesheet manager to save it in the database. That's the idea. Okay? So let's start by creating the timesheet, the enter hours controller. <coughs> yeah, we're going to have to do validation. In fact, we're going to have to grab data. Timesheet list controller never grabbed data. Timesheet list controller, all it did was show. Here it is. Show. Nothing else. So most probably a simple controller will not do the job for us. So let's go back to our book, Drawback. But it has this. A few weeks ago, I talked to you about the Spring Framework. In fact, two weeks ago, I talked to you about the Spring Framework and all the different controllers or type of controllers that were available. There is an image of all the different controllers. Here it is. 
full image. Right now, all we're using is this interface controller. However, for what we wanted, it's not enough. It was enough for Time Sheet List Controller. Because Time Sheet List Controller, all it did was create some kind of list and say, hey, hand it to the view and say, present it. But in this case, we're actually going to grab data, we're going to validate the data, we're going to have to massage the data, and then we're going to have to be able to do something on the submission of that data. Right? Well, the Spring Framework provides such a control for us, such a controller. And the controller is called, here it is, a simple form controller. And notice how deep it is in the hierarchy. A simple form controller is an abstract form controller, which comes from the base command controller, which comes from the abstract controller, which is eventually a controller. It's going to give us some specialty type of methods that we're going to have to implement or overwrite in order to handle the enter hours controller. So, let me introduce you to the enter hours controller. We're going to put it under the controllers. Okay. We're going to put it under the controllers package and it will extend from the simple form controller. Now, remember I downloaded the spring source code so I'm able to see all this Java doc for that controller. The concrete form controller implementation that provides configurable form and success views and an unsubmit chain for convenient overriding. It automatically resubmits to the form view in case of validation errors. This is something really cool. I mean, it will handle for you the validation errors and renders the success view in case of a valid submission. So it will take you to the right view if everything is okay. It will take you back to the same page with, val with errors, validation errors showing, if you have any validation errors. Okay? Plus, you're going to be able to do the unsubmit chain in case that you have to do something when the data has been submitted. So that's, that's something pretty cool. So right now, the enter hours controller what do you guys think? Are we going to need the timesheet manager? Most probably. Why? Because whether it's the first time that we create this timesheet or it's an, ex it's an existing timesheet that we're modifying, we need the help of the timesheet manager to grab that timesheet, to save that timesheet to the database, and stuff like that. Not only that, we're also going to need the department manager help. You know why? Because we actually, the mockup, as the mockup shows, we actually going to have to provide the list of all our departments so we can display them here. Not only the codes, but the entire description of each one of the departments so that we can show it in here. So we're going to need those timesheet, those both timesheet manager and department manager. Now, all we have to do is create a private property for each one of them and create the getters and setters. Why? Because we know that Spring will take care of the injection. We're going to have to do some setups in the XML, but Spring will take care of injecting them. Now, look at this. This is the first most important subroutine or function that you have to overwrite. It's called a form backing object. And every controller that is going to grab data 
from the user will have to create an object of that whole data. And it's going to be called the form backing object. Okay? In other words, it's the object that gets created out of the form data. The form backing object. So the first time that you hit this controller, the form backing object, what is it going to do? It's either one of two ways. It's either this is the first time that we're creating this timesheet and hence I'm going to have to create a brand new one. Or no, this timesheet was already created and I'm going to tell Timesheet Manager to give me it. Okay? How do we decide whether the timesheet exists or not? We're going to decide through the URL pattern. So, going back to my mockup. If, if I pass in here, if I do not pass any parameters in timesheet enter hours, if I do not pass any parameters, I'm going to assume that it's a brand new timesheet. But if I pass this parameter, TID equals 1. That means I want to be able to enter hours for the timesheet ID equals one. Got it? So we're gonna we're gonna plan in that convention. No TID means it's a brand new one, and we're gonna be able to manage our URLs in such a way that when you click on new, you will not pass a timesheet ID, but when you click on the existing one, you will pass the timesheet ID. Got it? All right. So this is how we put it in code. Remember, the form backing object has as a parameter the HTTP request. So what is the first thing that you're going to ask from the HTTP request? You're going to say, hey, request, get me a parameter called TID. And TID is just, you know, like the map key. Remember? It's a constant. We could call it T or we could have called it ID, or we, we just decided to call it TID, okay? So request, get me the parameter called TID. And if it's not null, and the length of it, the length of the value is greater than or equal to zero, it's greater than zero, I'm sorry. What does that mean? That it, indeed, a TID was passed. See, if, if an, a TID was not passed, if this doesn't, if this part is not being passed as a parameter, the request will show that there's no such parameter, that it's equal null, or that the length is not greater than zero. But if it is, if it's not null and the length is greater than zero, then you know that you're being passed a timesheet ID. What are you going to do about it? You can say, hey, timesheet manager, I got a timesheet ID. Could you please get me the timesheet with that ID? And that ID, notice that you get the parameter with that name from the request. And then you parse it into an integer. Remember, parameters are, you guys remember this from PHP, parameters are strings. They're all strings. Absolutely, they are all strings, and this is not different. When you tell the request to get the parameter with that name, you're going to get back a string. Okay, that's the signature of get parameter. What are you going to do with that string? You're going to parse it into an integer because you know you're expecting a timesheet ID, which is an integer. So I want you to keep that in mind because if your code, if your system specifically, the ID is not a, an integer but a code, which could be X, Y, Z or whatever, you got to keep that in mind, okay? You don't have to parse it into an integer. Once you parse it into an integer, hey, here it is. Get me the timesheet with that ID, okay? In fact, the separate parameter is whether you want to lock that ID or not. You want to lock that record in the timesheet table or not. So you, you pass false. You do not want to lock it. 
and that's what you return. You return that timesheet, an existing timesheet. Now, what happens? What happens if you do not find a TID in the parameter? In fact, the TID was null, or the length was equal to zero then the controller is going to be in charge of creating a brand new timesheet. And notice how it does this. It creates a new timesheet. It's going to initialize the employee ID to 1. Once again, we're, we're playing just with this employee. Later on, that's going to change. Okay? We're going to set the employee to 1. We're going to set the status code of the timesheet to P, which means pending. Right? We're going to set the period ending day to... Oh, look at this. What are we going to set the period ending date of this timesheet? If today is February 22nd, the period ending date for this week will be what? February 29th. I'm sorry, February, what is it, 27? Today's the 22nd. The period in day will be February 26th, Sunday. So, but if we were last week on the 15th, for instance, and we created a timesheet, new timesheet, the period in day for that timesheet would, be, would have been Sunday the 19th. So somehow we gotta create a function called get current period ending date that based on the current today date on today's date, it will calculate what's the period ending date for this week. And we're gonna do that through a class. It's a util class. And you guys are welcome to do the same thing with um, some of the common general functionality in your systems. Just create under the util. You know, util uh, package usually has uh, classes that are commonly used by all the other packages. Just create under, under the util package a date util. And here it is. Look at this. It's a very simple function. Get current period and date. What do we do? We create a new Gregorian calendar. In fact, that's the today, that's the preferred way to manage dates. Do not use date, the ATE class. Use Gregorian calendar. If you want to be able to massage dates and stuff like that, Gregorian calendar. And then what do you do? You say, Okay, Gregorian calendar, what's the day of the week? When you create a new Gregorian calendar and you don't, you don't pass a dating time, it will default to the current dating time. Okay? So what do you, see, what do you ask? Okay, Gregorian calendar, what's the day of the week from that Gregorian calendar, from today? If it's not equal to Sunday, then keep adding a day to the Gregorian calendar. So if we created a Gregorian calendar today, it will say it's a Wednesday. So you we're going to ask, what's the day of the week? Is it, is it not a Sunday? No, it's not. So it's going to increment it to a Thursday, and then a Friday, and then a Saturday, until it hits a Sunday. When it hits a Sunday, you're going to return that date and time. The get current period ending date, which it's being used by our Enter Hours controller. So what have we decided here? That we are not passing a TID, a timesheet ID. Therefore, we're going to have to create a brand new timesheet for employee 1, status code P, and the current period ending date. Then we return that timesheet. That's it. That's what it's called the form backing object. What is happening here? We are just sending a timesheet. And we're sending it where? Where are we sending this timesheet to? Where 
we're going to have to send it somewhere, right? Some view. Okay, what view? Well, somehow we're going to have to create an enter hours JSP or something like that that would actually grab that timesheet object and display it. Okay. Then once that JSP displays the timesheet, we're going to have to modify it or enter the data or whatever, and then we submit it, right? We click on the save. And the save is going to post all that data back to the controller because it's going to use the same URL, enterhours.htm or whatever we decide it's going to be. And then at that point, what's going to happen? The controller detects that some data got posted. Look at this. You guys remember on PHP how we detected it? You will ex that something was posted. You guys remember? There was a there was a hidden field. Right, exactly. You were extract from the post, right? Or from the get, depending on where you know what was sent to the f from the form, and then you will decide whether it just got submitted. That's to distinguish between, hey, this is the first time that I'm coming with an empty form, or no, this is the second one that I'm, second time that I'm coming with actual form posted, form data posted. Well, guess what? The enter hours controller is smart enough to know that the first time it's going to execute the form backing object, but when some data is posted, it's going to execute the on submit. Second time when the enter hours controller is being invoked, it's going to execute the on submit. And notice what are the parameters. The parameters are the request, the response, and an object called command. What is that object? Well, that object is going to be the entire data that got posted that gets converted into an object automatically by Spring for you. Here it is. This is the object with all the data that got submitted from the form. So what object is that going to be? Well, if you guys take a look at the mock-up, hey, this looks like department code. This like looks like hours for Monday, hours for Tuesday. This looks like the peer ending date, right? I think I have all the elements in here necessary to create a timesheet object. And indeed, that's what that's what the unsubmit is going to provide to me. The unsubmit is going to provide an object. Notice that it, there's no specific type. It's just an object, which I'm going to have to cast into a timesheet. Why? Because I know it's going to have all the elements necessary to create a timesheet. And that's what I do. On the unsubmit, I grab the command object that's being passed as a parameter, and I'm going to cast it into a timesheet. What am I going to do with that timesheet? I'm going to say, hey, timesheet manager, save the timesheet, and you just pass the timesheet. And then what are you going to do? You're going to return just like the model, just like the list, the timesheet list controller it did in the handle request. It's going to return a model in view. What is the model in view? The model is going to be empty, and the view is going to be just a success view, whatever you decide to go to. Who is going to decide where to go to? Your XML configuration. So we're going to have to work on our XML configuration now. Okay? What's the rest of the stuff that is in here? Well, just the getter and setter for the timesheet manager. Oh, and you, you know what? I'm going to have to do also a getter and setter for the department manager. So let's do that quickly. Let's right click, source, generate getters and setters for the department manager. 
and there it is. Now I have the getters and setters for the department manager and getters and setters for the timesheet manager. Any questions thus far? Okay, now let's work in our XML. This is the XML. What's the first thing that we're going to do? We're going to associate our URL to a specific controller. How do we do that? Right here. Right here. What do you guys want to show on the on the URL for enter hours? How about if we just say enter hours? Very simple. Spring. When you see enter hours dot htm, make sure that the enter the timesheet enter hours controller handles handles it. Okay, so we're going to have, under the controller section, we're going to have to create another bean. What's the name of the bean? Timesheet Enter Hours Controller. There you go. Who is going to represent that Timesheet Enter Hours Controller bean? It's not going to be this guy. And notice this is really cool. Even X in, in Eclipse, even XMLs are uh, intelligence aware. So you can actually click hit dot, control space, and it will show you all the possibilities. So this guy, the Enter Hours Controller, is the class that is going to represent the Timesheet Enter Hours Controller being. Who are we going to inject? We're going to inject the timesheet manager and we're going to inject the department manager. What do we call it in here? Yep, department manager. So if you call it Peter Paul in there, you're going to have to call it Peter Paul in here. Okay? Now that guy is being represented by by who? Well, by a bean that we don't have right now. The bean is called a department we're going to call it the department manager. So we're going to have to create another bean here called the department manager. Who is going to represent what class is going to represent that bean? This guy, department manager. Okay? So now we have both beans, timesheet manager and department manager. They're both getting injected into the timesheet enter hours controller. What else? The success view. Are we going to have a success view? Yeah. You know, once I successfully submit, uh, not submit, save the timesheet, I should be able to go somewhere. Well, guess what? I'm going to go back to timesheet list. So I was in timesheet list. From there, I click new timesheet. I was taken to enter hours. I enter that timesheet hours. Save. When I click save, it takes me back to timesheet list. All right. So the success view is going to be timesheet list. But what about the view, the initial view that the controller will take me when either I'm showing an empty timesheet or an existing timesheet? Where is that? Any ideas? I'm missing that part.
So this is where we're going to have to dive into the different properties Look at this. There's a qualifier, there's a meta, there's a description, constructor argument, property. So somehow we're going to have to create a property, and the property is going to be called. Look at this. It's really cool. It gives me all the possible properties that I can instantiate. How did it know that these were the options? You guys have any idea how did it know that these were the options? That I can inject into this class? Well, very simple. Remember, this being the timesheet enter hours controller is being represented by who? By the enter hours controller. And the enter hours controller is a simple form controller and the simple form controller has all these different finals that we can um, that we can use in fact there's something called the form view set the name of the view that should be used for form display ha ah, we got it so this is the view. This is the view that we're going to use in order to tell our controller, "Hey, the first time when you want to when you want to send when you want to send the view that is going to display the enter hours, that view is manipulated by the form view. And what is it going to be? Timesheet list. I'm sorry, not timesheet list, enter hours. Remember, views. Somehow I didn't like that. Views are manipulated by the internal resource view resolver. Remember, you, you remember that, guys? A view doesn't stand on its, on its own. It's actually dependent on the view resolver and the view resolver says that it's going to do what? That it's going to prefix the view name with this URL and it's going to suffix it with this extension. So basically the view names are just the name of the file without the extension. Basically. That's what it's saying. Okay, so you get the yinks of it. these three properties. Notice the one property is called the form view and the form view is enter hours. The success view, look at this, the success view is going to be actually a redirect to the timesheet list.htm. That's where we want to go, remember? When you click on save button, what is it going to do? It's going to take that all that data and post it back to enter hours controller. And then enter controller is going to save it and it has to send me somewhere. Where is it going to send me to? It's going to redirect me to timesheet list. Here it is. Okay. Now the command class. Remember the object it gets passed in the unsubmit. It's called the command, right? The command has to have a type. I know it's going to be an object, but hopefully it's going to map to a particular um, model. In fact, the model is going to be a timesheet. So we're going to have to put in here timex web dot domain dot timesheet. So our command class, the class that gets passed around between the form and the controller, is going to be a timesheet. Okay? All right, let's test it. What are we missing? Oh, we're missing the JSP. So the JSP is pretty much going to be very similar to this HTML. 
but it's going to have the .jsp extension and it should manipulate a timesheet a timesheet object that is going to be passed to it There's .jsp what does that .jsp look like? here it is it's a table that shows enter hours as the heading here it is, enter hours as the heading then it's got to show a section if there's any errors and we're going to go back to this section uh, once we start working with validations it's going to have a section that it says hey if there's error messages I want you to show them in red see that phone caller and you're going to do you're going to do a for each because you're going to go through each one of the errors and you're going to display it Okay. what else you're going to be putting the peer ending date where's the peer ending date coming from this peer ending date where's it coming from well it's part of the timesheet right the timesheet has a property called peer ending date well that object that gets being passed around in JSP is called the it's called the command so you guys have to keep that in mind okay command is the name is the object it's the name of the object that gets passed around between the JSP and the controller so when you want to display the peer ending date you just say command dot peer ending date and it will display the period ending date right there. Okay? And it's all done through the spring bind. Spring bind is this special tag that allows us to bind the object to the JSP. What else is it going to display? It's going to display department, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all that stuff, and then a total. How do you display the minutes from Monday? Here it is. It's a spring bind to what? To the command dot minutes Monday. I see that. And how do you display the minutes for Tuesday? Well, Tuesday is going to be a spring bind of the command dot minutes Tuesday. Now the key part here is command. You and I know it's a timesheet. And minutes Tuesday, there's got to be a, a getter called get minutes T U E. If you do not have that getter, this will crap on you on the JSP. It will say, I cannot find a getter for minutes Tuesday. Okay? So that's why it's so important when you go in here, see? Here is Minutes Tuesday. This Minutes Tuesday got to have a getter. A get Minutes Tuesday. That's what the JSP is invoking here. That's what it's calling. Command that Minutes Tuesday. What about, what about this box here? with all the department names. How are you displaying that? Can anybody tell me? That's a what? In HTML lingo, that's a select, right? How do you build that select? Well, here it is. The select is actually inside a spring bind. A spring bind. A spring bind of what? A spring bind of the command dot department code. Okay? So whatever comes out of this combo box that you select, okay, whatever comes out of it, it's going to be assigned to the department code of the timesheet. That's the whole idea. That's the bind that you want to... How do you do that? Very simple. You're going to build a select, and the name of that select is going to be status expression. Status meaning it's coming out of this path so the status is going to be department code expression means it's the actual name of the department code okay 
in here on the unchange you're gonna call some JavaScript stuff and we're gonna see later on what that JavaScript does but notice that the select has an option created what's the first option empty that's the first option and what are the other options the other options are coming from a for each from a loop a loop from where well a loop from an object that is being passed to the JSP called departments and notice that JSP has sort of like the same idea that PHP has that all the variables that are being used start with a dollar sign that's the convention in JSP all the variables that are being passed to the JSP from the controller except the command obviously the command is the command or it's the form backing object all the variables are going to be called dollar sign open curly brackets and then the name of the of the variable so from that items you're going to create a variable called department and what do you do what are you going to do with it well you know that this is going to be a list of departments right so you're going to have to create an option whose value is the department code of that department and what's going to show what's going to show as the as the name as the description of the option well here it is it's going to show the department name and better yet look at this if the department code of the current department that you're building an option for is equal to the status value. Who is the status? The status again is the command department code. This guy. This is the status. It's equal to the status that value. Then you're going to put select. And that's an if statement. If this test is valid, you're going to put select it. What is that doing? Can you tell me what's that? What, what is that doing? It's actually going through the value of the department code of the current timesheet, okay, and comparing it to the option that you're building right now from all the departments, from all the list of departments. It's comparing them, and if it finds this the same value, you want that option to be selected because that's the department for that timesheet. That's basically what it's doing. Okay? And then at the end, look at this. At the end, we're going to have the submit button, which is a save, right? Look at this, save. And so it's going to post this form. Where is the form? Here's the form. Aha. The form is going to be a post. A post to where? Well, on submit, you got to do return validate. So here's where the JavaScript comes into place. We have actually created a few JavaScript functions in here. The JavaScript functions is called validate. So you're going to return the validate and validate is this function. What are you validating? Well, you're validating, first of all, that the total number of hours for this timesheet does not surpass 96. And that's that could be a business rule. Um, maybe we said, you know what, we're not going to allow an employee to submit a, a timesheet for one week that goes beyond 96 hours. There's no way that an employee can work more than 96 hours a week. Or if the look at this, the the, the documents form sub zero elements called element called name. 
and watch the name the name is the name of the this guy the select okay so basically what it's saying here is if the selected index of the department is equal to zero that means you have not selected a department you have to select a department. Please select a department. So it will alert you. Please select a department. And it will return false. So basically, this validate is going to go through a few things. JavaScript, that means it's client-side validation. Is that the only validation that we're going to do? No. We're going to do server-side validation as well. But as far as client-side validation is concerned, it's taken care of by JavaScript by this validate function which is going to make sure that the total number of hours it does not exceed 96 that you have selected a department and that's it okay so if this uh, validate returns true then this form is going to post unto itself what does it mean unto itself it means it's going to go onto the enter hours.htm back again options you guys want to see it running let's see if it runs we still haven't done the validation on the server side so I don't know if this is going to work or not but we'll try it um, oh wait all this time has been working right oh okay uh, word of advice every time that you change every time that you change your XML your servlet XML configuration you have to restart Tomcat otherwise it will not take your changes okay so it's a good idea to do a project clean of Timex web and then tell the server to restart itself so I just restarted Tomcat and this is what it looks like what's the first thing you should be looking for on the console you guys remember I went through this the first time that you guys created your first controller you have to make sure that the number of beans created has incremented in fact, that your timesheet enter hours controller is one of the beans that it's being loaded. Look at this. It loaded URL map, timesheet enter hours controller, timesheet list controller, the timesheet manager, the department manager, and the view resolver. Cool. So we know that now that we have our controller up and running. Next. we are going to hit the server with localhost timex web what do I get? index.jsp that works now I go to timesheet list.htm what do I get? I get Mike Dover's timesheets this is real data Okay from the database. Look at this. Click here to add a new timesheet. What is the URL that is taking me to? Enterhours.htm. That's what I want because that's what I call the URL associated to that Enterhours controller. So let's see what happens. I'm going to click on eh didn't like it. Okay. 
So there is an enter hours JSP in line 110, right there. It's an exception on line 110. And I know I have a lot of stuff in that. I have a lot of stuff in that JSP that is not. Oh, that's right. The beam property is not called the Parman code. You guys remember what the beam property ca is called in the, the timesheet? I changed that, and I changed it on purpose. You guys all remember? I call it. I call it the T department code. Remember? So somewhere in here, department code. It's not called department dot department code. It's called command T department code. What is it called? T department code. How do I know? Because that's coming from the command. Who is the command? The command is the object that gets passed around between the JSP and the controller. Where is that defined? That's defined in the XML. What is it called? Command class. What is the type? Timesheet. Let's take a look at the timesheet. Yes, timesheet has something called a T department code. Capital C. You save it. Now, did I make any XML changes? No. Since I didn't do any XML changes, I do not have to reboot. Tomcat. So I can hit it again. When you change when you make JSP changes, those changes are immediate. Yes. I present to you enter hours MT. Now this pure ending date looks funny. Shouldn't be a comma box, right? It should be what? Just to date. What's going on here? I think I'm trying to do too many things here. Here's pre-ending date. Spring bind to pre-ending date. I'm not going to do a select. Save it. What happened? What's missing? No, here it is. Oh, okay. Oh, you're right. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'll get back to you to bat in a few minutes. Let's refresh. All right. So now at least it's not showing anything, but at least you know I can see that it's trying to put a appearance in date and not a combo box. It's not showing me the departments. Why? Why is it not showing me the departments? Where are the departments coming from? Oh, it's a select statement. Oh, okay, it's a select statement. Built from what? Oh, it's built from this departments variable. Am I passing a departments variable? Is is the controller passing a departments variable? Honestly, I don't recall. Let's go to the enter hours controller. No way. It's passing a timesheet only. Whether it's an empty timesheet with just a few fields fill out or an existing timesheet with all the fields filled out. <coughs> it's just a timesheet. Well, since we need to pass more data than just the form backing object, <coughs> we're going to have to create a method in fact, it's a method that we override from the simple form controller. And the method is called the extended data. When you want to pass data between the JSP and the controller, 
that is additional to the form backing object, you're going to have to do it through. Yeah. So let's add to the intro hours controller, let's add this reference data. What is going to be the reference data? Well, the reference data is going to be a hash map. Remember hashes? Name value pairs. The reference data is going to return the hash map containing a list of all the departments from the database records. So basically you create a new hash map and you say, hey, the department manager, get me all the departments. And that list that comes back, you're going to put it into this hash map called model, right? And you're going to call it departments. If you call it Peter Paul in here, you're going to have to call it Peter Paul in here, in the JSP. You get it? All right. Did we do any XML changes? No. I think we change dramatically our enter hours controller. Let me see. Let's clean it up. Let's take a look at the console. Okay. Let's clear our console and let's hit it again. Ah, here it is. Now we're getting all our departments. See that? And we got it by adding to our controller the reference data. Okay? Reference data. Now that's overriding the reference data from the simple form controller, which is the class that this controller inherits from. If you don't inherit, you don't have to. If you don't override, I'm sorry. If you don't override it, you don't have to. That means you're not going to pass any additional data other than the form backing object. All right. Now, why is it not showing the period ending date? If I am passing this URL with no TID parameter, what did we say we're going to do? We're going to create a brand new timesheet, right? And the period ending date should be this coming Sunday period ending date. But it's not showing in the JSP. I wonder why. So I'm going to go into the I'm going to go very quickly into my JSP. Take a look at the period ending date. I'm going to have to format it. I think that's what the problem is. Okay. Let me see if that works. Oh. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. Notice that we are unable to convert a string status value to a class util date for attribute value. I've been talking about everything on the front end is handled as a string. If you have anything different than a string, you're going to have to create a property editor. And a property editor, basically what it's going to do it's going to transform properties that are different than strings, okay? And it's going to edit them. 
and we're probably, probably we're going to do the same. We're going to have to do the same thing with the integers. The integers in the in the hours for the day, for Monday, for Tuesday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Keep your ending date. Doesn't it's not going to show for now. All right, just the departments. Four hours Monday and four hours Tuesday. And then I'm going to submit save. Okay? What do you think is going to happen? I should go back to timesheet list, right? Because that's where I wanted to be redirected. But before it does that, it has to save the timesheet. Look at this. February 26, 2012. Sounds about right. Number of hours? 0 0.13. Not very good. Customer support? Spending? Timesheet ID 16. Let's take a look. Right now I have 1 through 11. I refresh. I have 16. Can any of you guys tell me what happened to 12, 13, 14, and 15? Those were the ones that we created in the timesheet list controller test. Very good. Point. So look at this. It didn't convert these into... Wait a minute. I'm inputting hours, but I need to save minutes. And when I grab a timesheet that has time in minutes, I want to be able to display them in hours. I'm going to have to create some kind of validators. All this conversion automatically. Okay? Because that's wrong. It thinks that those are minutes, and when you divide it by 60, obviously it's going to come up with a decimal, and we don't, want, we don't like that. So at least we know that it's saving it, right? It's submitting it and saving it. But we have two problems. We have problems with the minutes and hours conversion, and we have problems with displaying the peer ending date. Okay. And in the init binder, you initialize all the binders that you're going to need. So here it is. A need binder is the one that registers our minutes property editor. So we're going to have to create a property editor. And we're going to call it the minutes property editor, whatever you want to call it. Basically what it's going to do is going to take the values from the front end and convert it into minutes and saves it in the back end. And then the opposite, when he grabs the minutes from the back end, which is the database, before it displays it on the front end, it has to convert it into hours. Okay? And that's all done through the init binder. So the init binder, you're going to have to register a custom editor, and this custom editor is going to be a custom editor for integers. Okay? So this enter hours controller has a custom editor specifically for the integer type. Who's going to take care of that? It's going to take care of it by the minutes property editor. This is what the minutes property editor looks like. It actually inherits from a Java class called a property editor support. Okay? And basically this is um, class, all it does is it generates the get as text and the set as text functions. One is a function, the other one is a procedure. The get as text is what gets executed when it goes from the back end to the front end. 
and the set as text is the one that gets executed when it goes from the front end to the back end. Very simple. So you create this called minutes property editor that extends from a property editor support and you implement get as text and set as text. So what are we doing with the integers that get passed from the front end to the back end? On the front end we're, di we're displaying four hours for Monday. Four hours means four times sixty two hundred and forty minutes. Okay? So the set as text is going to take that text, the four that got um, the four that got input, right? And what is it going to do? It's going to create. It's going to transform it into a float. See that? Float that value of text, and then that float value you are going to multiply by some alter by. An alter by is a constant which is 60. Basically what we're doing is converting those hours into minutes. Okay? Actually this would be 60 minutes to an hour. Okay? And then we're going to we're going to create this new value called new value. <laughs> okay? And then we're going to cast it into an integer. Why do we want to cast it into an integer? Because we do not want to display fractions of an hour. In fact, that's the reason we are saving on the back end, we're saving all our time in minutes. Okay? So what do we do? We take this new value, we convert it into an integer value, and then we set the value. We just say set value, and that's it. That's the value that is going to be displayed on the front end. If we have any number format exception as far as this is not a float, this is not a you know a valid number, or whatever, then we're going to raise an exception, an illegal argument exception, saying, "Hey, this is an invalid number." So that's when it goes from the front end to the back end. We're going to multiply by 60. What about when it goes from the back end to the front end? then we're going to execute the get as text. Okay? What do we do in that case? We say, okay, give me the value, and I'm going to cast it into an integer. This is it. Oh, you know, something went wrong. Something is wrong. Okay? So we're just going to default to return empty string. Okay? So if the value that came back from the database is null, Maybe it's brand new timesheet. Could be. We're going to return a string. In fact, what we should return is 0, 0.0. .0. We can do that. Okay? But if not, if it's not equal to null, alter by. Okay? And we're going to take that new value and we're going to format it with a decimal format. And decimal format is this format, two decimals. Got it? All right. So this minutes property editor will take care of this issue. The issue that when we typing here four, we really meant four hours, not four minutes. It will do the conversion automatically for us. And now, we can try it again. Now we're going to put six, six, and we're going to change it to information technology and we're going to save it. Sorry, I'm trying to
create. Remember, we're not allowed to create duplicates in here. So I'm going to have to get rid of 16. Let's edit on the database. Let's delete that row. Apply the changes. Exit. OK. Sorry about that. I forgot to. All right. So now I'm going to put 6, 6, information technology safe. There you go. See that what happens now? What is it showing here? 6 and 6 equals 12. What does it show on the back end? For 18, it shows 360. That's 6 hours. 360. And one is all through a property editor. Okay? What happens if I click on this timesheet? What do you think should happen? I should be able to go back to the same timesheet. Now it's not going to create a brand new one. Why? Because notice on the URL on the on the bottom of the of the browser. Notice what it shows. It shows enter hours htm question mark tid equals 18. Remember the convention? The convention was, hey controller, if you're being passed a TID, that means that the timesheet exists. Therefore, you go into the database and grab it and return it. And so when I click in here, I'm not going to show a brand new timesheet. I'm going to be shown the timesheet that I was working on. And then I'm going to change Wednesday to four hours. And then I'm going to click save. And when I do that, the number of hours gets bumped to 16. 6 plus 6 plus 4. Now, let's fix the period ending date issue. How is that fixed? Here it is. The period ending date that I'm trying to display in here. which has command period ending date it's wrong because we do not want to bind it we do not want to bind it can you tell me why we do not want to bind the period ending date in here I'm sorry in here are we gonna give the freedom to the user to change the period ending date no we don't want them to be changing the period ending date. Therefore, we do not want to do a bind. We just want to be able to display. Okay? When we want to display, look at this. When we want to display, we just say, hey, format, you know, this is a format that we're going to pass. But the value is going to come from command, dollar sign, curly brackets, command. And it's called the peer ending date dot peer ending date. That's it. That's all we're going to need. And its type is going to be a date. Right? And this is the pattern that we want to display it as. So this is going to show the month completely, the month, then two digit dates, and then four digit years. So we save it and then we're going to refresh it. Here it is. See that? Peer ending date, February 26, 2012. So our mistake was trying to bind it. When you want to bind something, that means you want to be able to transfer the information from the front to the back. Where are we doing binding? We're doing binding here in the department code. Where else? Here. In the minutes for Monday. Where else? In the minutes for everything. All the minutes. What about total? Do we want the user to change the total here? No. Therefore, it's not a binding. It's an actual... Oops. 
In this case, it is a binding. You're binding through t t command total minutes. And then you're doing a C out of the status value. Is that the only way? No. You could have done it this way, too. Value, command. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? C out, value, command, get total minutes. That's another way, instead of doing a bind. Save it. Ah, oh, look at this. See what happens? See what happens when you say, hey, I want to get the, the, the value directly from the total minutes from command? What is total minutes? First of all, who is command? Timesheet, right? Okay. So timesheet's got to have a get total minutes. Let's look at it. Timesheet. Where are you? Here it is. Where is get total minutes? Get total minutes. Oh, it's actually adding the minutes from Monday through Wednesday. So you are displaying here 960. Did it ever go through the minutes property editor? No. When you want it to go through the minutes property editor, then you got to do a bind. Then you say, I want you to bind the total minutes from the man. And I want you to display, remember, status refers to this path. And that value is to the value. So now, when you refresh, see that? Those 960 go, since they are bound, they go through the property editor, the custom property editor, and therefore they are transformed. All right? You guys get it? Okay. I want you to implement a similar controller in your system. One that is asking for information, whatever that information is. It could be a registration, it could be some invoice data, whatever. Okay? But I need you to be able to show an empty timesheet, the equivalent. Input data and then hit submit, save, submit, whatever. And that data that you put, that you input, should be saved in the database. Most probably it's going to have to be for your main entity.